Good day grade 11s. Welcome to the first lesson in week 19. In the last lesson of last week we learned about mass to mass calculations and in this lesson we're going to learn how to do mass to volume calculations. Mass to volume stoichiometry. So this is exactly what it suggests. If you know the mass of one of the reactants or the products you can work out the volume um, of one of the other products. So, if you know the mass or the concentration and volume of the known, you can work out the number of moles of the known with C equals N on V, or of course, if you know the mass, it's just um, N equals M on big M. Once you know the number of moles of the known, you use the mole ratio from your balanced equation to then work out the number of moles of the unknown, and using that you can work out mass, or you can work out concentration or volume of the unknown, depending on the information that you have. Let's look at an example. What mass of zinc will be required to completely react with 50 ml of hydrochloric acid of concentration 2.00 molar? The reaction is given to you here, but this is an acid with a metal, so it makes a salt and hydrogen gas. So what information do we know? It's really important to read the question um, and to write down the information as it's told to you. So what mass of zinc? So we're asking here what the question mark of zinc is. So write down M equals question mark. We'll react completely with 50 ml of hydrochloric acid of a concentration of 2.0 molar. So I'm going to put all of that information down. My volume of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.05 litres. Remember, volume has to be in litres. And my concentration is 2.00 molar. I'm trying to find out... Great Levens, I just want to remind you that this over here, the 0 0.05 litres, is the same as a decimeter cube. So one litre is equal to one decimeter cube. So don't get confused with that. That's fine. We are used to using this, okay? So let's carry on. ...the mass of zinc and I always know the molar mass of zinc, so I may as well write that in straight away too. That equals 65.4 grams per litre, or per mole. If you look at this straight away, and you always set your work out like this, it's easy to get marks, because you can see a V, you can see a C, you know you can work out N. It gives you somewhere to go. Once you've got N of hydrochloric acid, you can work out with mole ratio what N of zinc is. You've got M, so you can work out uh, the mass but we'll take you through that step by step. So, calculate the amount of mole uh, of the known in mole. So, we know the number of mole of hydrochloric acid will equal C times V, which was 2.00 times 0 0.0500. And we had that from the previous slide here. Just this information I'm transferring over now. Okay. So that equals 0 0.100 mole. The next step is to calculate the amount of the unknown in mole using the mole ratio. So 2 mole of hydrochloric acid, 2 mole of hydrochloric acid will react with 1 mole of zinc. And that's all I've written here. 2 mole of hydrochloric acid will react with 1 mole of zinc. So if I've got 0 0.100 mole of hydrochloric acid, it will react with the mole ratio, which is the unknown over the known, so 1 over 2 of zinc, which will equal 0 0.50 mole. Now, going back a step, think logically at this point here. If you set it out like this, you can always think logically. 2 mole of hydrochloric acid react 1 mole of zinc. That's half the amount, so it makes sense that we multiply this by half. This needs to be a smaller figure. If you get a bigger figure here, you can see that it's wrong and you've done something wrong. So go back and double check your answer. But always just check the size of these numbers. Hydrochloric acid must be bigger than zinc. Step four, calculate the required mass of the unknown. So mass of zinc will equal the number of mole times the molar mass, which equals 0 0.05, which we just got from up here, times 65.4, which is the molar mass of zinc, which equals 3.2. Um, 3.27 grams. Okay, here's a question you can have a go at yourselves. Um, so have a pause of this if you're feeling confident, and if not, just keep watching and I'll talk you through it. 
So there's a lot of writing here. When 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid is added to solid magnesium oxide, the basic oxide dissolves very rapidly and a large amount of heat is given out. The equation for the reaction is, and it's given you the reaction, so that's a good question, 2HCl plus MDO makes MgCl2 plus H2O. Part A of the question. If 50 ml of acid just dissolves the sample of the oxide, what mass of the oxide has reacted? Let's look at that part of the question first. So what I've done here is I've just rewritten the important parts of the question. When 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid is added to solid magnesium oxide, okay, the basic oxide is dissolved very rapidly and a large amount of heat is given out. If 50 ml of acid just dissolves the sample of oxide, what mass of oxide has reacted? So let's look at what we know. Here's our chemical reaction. So let's start off by putting in our mole ratios up the top. I like to do that because it makes it nice and clear. So I've got a 2 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. Excellent. Let's look at the information that's given to us in the question now. So I've got 2 molar hydrochloric acid. So C equals 2.0. Is added to solid magnesium oxide. That's here. 50 ml of acid. So V equals 50 ml, which equals 0 0.050 litres. Remember, volume has to be in litres. And it's asking us to find out what mass of the oxide has reacted. So I'm going to write under here M equals question mark, just to remind me what I'm looking for. Because I'm looking for M, I always know big M. So write that down now too. M equals 40.312 grams per mole. Going back to the hydrochloric acid here, we can clearly put in a V so we can work out. Look at our mole ratio now. So we've got two hydrochloric acids. We'll react with one MgO. We've got 0 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid. So that's going to react with the mole ratio, which is the unknown divided by the known. So half times 0 0.1 mole of MgO. So the number of mole of magnesium oxide equals half times 0 0.1 which equals 0 0.05 mole. This is a good time as I said before to double check that it makes sense. Two of those will put you all react with one of those so 0 0.1 of those will react with 0 0.05 of that. It's less, it's half. So that's correct. So we've done that bit correctly. We can now move on. What are we looking for again? We're looking for here the mass of magnesium oxide. So M of magnesium oxide will equal N times big M, which equals 0 0.05 times big M, which we've written up the top here. And that will equal 2.02 grams. Three significant figures, because our question here has three significant figures throughout. Let's have a look at part B of the question. When 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid is added to solids, so it's the same question. Let's look at what they're asking though. What mass of magnesium chloride would be produced in the process? The first thing I'm going to do is write down the reaction again. And write down my mole ratios. I've got 2 to 1 to 1 to 1. And I'm looking for now the mass of magnesium chloride. M equals question mark. So let's write in big M straight away. G equals 95 
0.398 grams per mole. Now you've done the hard work in the previous question already. You've worked out that the number of mole of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.1 mole and the number of mole of magnesium oxide is 0 0.05 mole. You could use either of these to work it out, but I think it's much easier because this is a 1 to 1 ratio. So use your answer here. You can see straight away that 1 of MgO will make 1 of MgCl2. It's a 1 to 1 ratio, so you know that the number of mole of MgCl2 will equal 0 0.05 mole. And then all you have to do is work out the mass. So again, M of MgO, oh sorry, Cl2 equals N times big M, which equals 0 0.05 times 95.398, which is just the big M that I wrote down at the start, and that equals 4.77 grams. Three significant figures, which is what my question had to start me off. Right, grade 11s, I hope you found that very useful. Again, remember if you're going through this video again, that a litre is a decimeter cubed, so that's exactly what we use. A milliliter is a centimeter cubed, which is why we divide by a thousand. Okay, so it's exactly the same. Centimeter cubed is milliliters, and liters is decimeters cubed. Um, other than that, I thought it was very useful. Please go back through the video, make sure you can do those calculations by yourself, pause at every time you ask a question and then do the calculation, make sure you're right and then go do the practice questions at the end of the section. Have a great day.